So I think we need to talk about the elephant in the room. That's an elephant. That is an elephant. <laughs> this, this is a table. That, that is a lamp. And this, this is an elephant. We, we have ghosts. There's ghosts here. We, we found out about that from the last owner of the home. <laughs> oh, it's just the craziest thing. They just sometimes show up. Today we start our new series called Elephant in the Room. Uh, the new series is going to talk about different topics that the church don't like to talk about. It's also going to talk about different topics that we just don't like to talk about just as normal human beings on this earth. So... Uh, for the next about five weeks, we, uh, we're going to talk about these topics, dive into it, truly see what the Bible says about it. Last week we celebrated the mamas in the house, and we'll give the moms another round of applause. Yeah. Woo. We celebrated all the mamas in the house because we're thankful for all of them, um, and we honor them. So, But this week we start with week one of the elephant in the room. We start off with, uh, it's called the identity crisis. The identity crisis of selfish ambition. Uh, selfish ambition is something that we all carry. We're all selfish people. And we're willing to tell everybody that with everything that we do. Our selfish needs, our desires, uh, not truly understanding what we truly need as the church. Um, these desires are can go above and beyond of different things of however we may take it, of a lot of things that we, we carry on in our lives. And our true identity is lost. Our true identity is truly lost, and the only way we can find that identity is through one hope. Through one hope. Tonight we're going to be in the book of James. The book of James, chapter 3. We'll give you a second on your little electronic Bible, or if you're old school, you like the paper Bible too, that works. We're in James 3, verses 13 through 18. God's Word says this, Who is wise and understanding among you? Let him show by good, by good conduct that his works are done in the meekness of wisdom. But if you have bitter envy and self-seeking in your hearts, do not boast and lie against the truth. This wisdom does not descend from above, but it is earthly, sensual, demonic. For where envy and self-seeking exist, confusion and every evil thing are there. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. Now the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. Thank you, God, for His Word. James is talking about the wisdom and the responsibility of teachers. He demonstrated wisdom through godly living. Identity of Christ should be known through us. The identity of Christ should be known by what we do, should be known by our works, should be known by our fruits. Our works should be known through our faith, our faith in Christ. Not our faith in other beliefs, our faith in Christ alone. Through faith we have good works. Through faith, faith in Christ, we have good works. Then we show our fruits. We are judged on our fruits that we show. When the day comes when you go to meet your Maker, you're going to be judged by your fruits. 
You're going to be judged by your actions. You're going to be judged on how you treat others. And see, the one thing about it is, is that, that we're selfish people. Because we do not like to spread the good news. We don't spread it enough. We keep this thing called a Bible too on our bedside, and what do we do? We read it and keep it to ourselves. We don't tell others. We don't hold each other accountable for our actions. We veer off. Sometimes we veer off too much. We read here in Romans, Romans chapter 2, verse 8 through 9. But to those who are self seeking and do not obey the truth, but obey unrighteousness, indignation, and wrath, tribulation, and anguish on every soul of man who does evil, of the Jew first, and also the Greek. Self-seeking joy is against God's will for us. Our self-seeking joy of what we may think is joy, God will use that against us. And it's against God's will. It's against God's will. Our wisdom will always fall short of the wisdom of God. It's true. Our wisdom, there's no way you can measure our wisdom to the wisdom of God. His wisdom is a lot more smarter than you. I guarantee you that. A lot more smarter than all of us. His wisdom is an abundance more than what we could ever measure. We can't measure that. We can't take a yardstick and measure God's wisdom. We can't take an IQ test and do it against God's because I guarantee He's going to ace it every time. His wisdom is a lot more than ours. See, in James we read on the destructive of the tongue and how it can be, how envy and selfish ambition can be a disaster. James speaks clearly in verse 14. James states bitter jealousy and selfish ambition in verse 14. And those are characteristics that we all carry. We carry jealousy. We carry selfish ambition. We care about ourselves. We're jealous of others. We're jealous of family. We're jealous of other, of other things that other people may achieve. Well, I hate to tell you that. It don't matter what anybody achieves on this world. All that matters is that we glorify God in everything that we do. Amen. In the end... You will be judged by your actions here on earth. He's going to notice selfish ambition. He's going to say, you were selfish. You were selfish. You didn't proclaim me. Nobody knew you. I never knew you. When that happens, what, there's nothing we can say. There's nothing that we can do. That's it. It's judgment time. And we're going to be judged on these different attributes. The different vices are blind us from true understanding. The world likes to blind us, don't they? The world likes to blind us from true understanding of the gospel and true understanding of who God truly is. And the reason why is because we don't spread it enough and nobody knows it. I hate to say it. It's important. You see, that's the thing. The, the importance of the gospel is more important than anything else in life. You can't measure the gospel on anything else. The Bible is what measures us every single day. And it's up to us if we're going to let it get dusty or not. The world blinds us from true understanding. And you know what it does? It does the opposite of the gospel. The world will do the opposite of the gospel. Every single day, it will do the opposite. The complete opposite. I 
don't know about you, but every time we see something in the media or we see something in this world, just by talking to people in this world, it's the complete opposite than what the gospel represents. The way we treat others is the opposite of what the gospel represents. Galatians 5 says this, verse 20. Idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, decessions, and heresies. I could line up the world with a definition of that. That's straight out of God's holy word. And these are all attributes that we do. Idolatry. Jealousness. Selfish ambitions. We talked about that. Selfish ambitions. Heresies. Those are all characteristics of the world and how we are. The true thing that we can take from this is the only wisdom we should receive is from God. The only wisdom. There's nothing that we're going to see on the news that's going to give us enough wisdom to, to have a successful life. When you hear the prosperity gospel, they're going to tell you that everything is okay, that as long as you love yourself, that's all matters. I'm here to tell you that's wrong. That's a heresy. The gospel is what matters. I yell, that was awful. <laughs> Oh, sir, get it loud. Hey, that's it. It's a gift from God and it's his true wisdom. The gospel is true wisdom. 1 Corinthians says this. However, we speak wisdom among those who are mature. Yet not the wisdom of this age, nor the rulers of this age, who are coming to nothing. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, the hidden wisdom of which God ordained before the ages for our glory. It's all wisdom. It's all wisdom. And he spoke this, Paul spoke this to the church, to the church of Corinth. And you know what amazes me is that Paul spoke that to the church of Corinth. And we have churches still to this day that do not follow God's word, God's rule, God's wisdom. And we fall on man's wisdom to form a church. When the Bible is our wisdom, God's word is wisdom. And it's something we should follow every single day. No matter what we're doing. No matter how small the decision may be. we got to fall back on God. And allow Him to work in our lives to get the wisdom that we need to make these decisions. When we think of wisdom, we see these characteristics. Peace. Authentic peace from God. When we pray for our different decisions that we make, we get peace from God to allow that decision to even happen. Our second point, second characteristic, gentleness. Thoughtful and respectful towards others and their feelings. Thoughtful and respectful towards others. Now how often does that happen? How often do we are we thoughtful of others' feelings? <laughs> we'll sit there and then we'll care about ourselves, which is the selfish ambition. Our selfish needs. <clears throat> Gentleness. Our third one, third characteristic. Open to reason. Willing to listen. Listen. It's important to listen to others. It's important to obey others. Unless it's unbiblical. Then you don't obey. 
I encourage you to don't obey. But we must listen to others. We don't realize what other people are going through or something that you have experienced in the past and you can be a beacon of light to these people. Or some encouragement to others. These are all characteristics of what we should be doing. Our fourth characteristic, full of mercy. You are not wise when you are stingy with mercy towards others, but you should demonstrate care and mercy. These are all different characteristics of how we should treat others. Hear me out on this. So when you receive wisdom from God, it's our responsibility to plant a seed and guide others. We are just collecting information. We just take information, because we do, and taking it and don't do anything with it. It's called consuming. So when you take stuff and you take it all inside, you're consuming that, which makes you a consumer. You are not a giver. If you are consuming, we're not called to consume. We are called to spread the gospel. It doesn't say receive the gospel and take it. We'll work inside to spread the gospel. And see, the church has been known from the beginning of time to have consumers. Who take information presented and they will not do anything with it. They collect wisdom and utilize for themselves. It's selfish practice. Paul talked about that in the early church. That they did that. It's a selfish, consuming practice. Psalm 37 says this. The mouth of righteous speaks wisdom and his tongue talks of justice. The mouth of righteous speaks wisdom and his tongue talks of justice. How often are we speaking wisdom to others through God's word? How often are we using God's word to disciple others? This is the ultimate wisdom that we can take. And it's God's word it's living and it's breathing. And we should utilize it. So you go back to James, verse 17, and James talks about pure wisdom from God. Open to reason and full of mercy and good fruits. God's wisdom is always pure. It's the purest form of wisdom. If we're going to measure wisdom like I stated earlier, it's the purest form. And what does it mean by good fruits? What do we know about good fruits? What, is, what does that mean? So when we talk about fruits, what is it? It's about your external actions and how you're bearing good fruits. It's about how you're acting. It's about how we're communicating with others. That's what our fruits are. It's by your words, by your attitudes, how we serve others. This ties into your identity. So our actions tie into our identity. Everything that we say, everything that we do is in our identity. It's in our DNA. It's who we are. That's why we're in a crisis. Because all of those different things that we're doing, we're not doing it to glorify God. We're doing it to glorify us. It's messing up our identity. It's our DNA. And so when we talk about our good fruits on how we look towards others, good fruits are recognized by your loving nature towards others. Loving nature towards others. Galatians 5, 22 says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, Kindness, goodness, and faithfulness. Those are all characteristics of our fruits, of how we should be. What comes out of your mouth? What comes out of your mouth 
is glorifying God. That's the form of your fruit. What you are saying. Our third one is time. How you utilize your time. We get caught up in the hustle and bustle all the time of life. We do. And it happens. How we utilize our time, how we make time for God is important. Because you know what he's going to say? You are too busy with your time. How we utilize our time. Our fourth one is obeying and professing the Word of God. It's obeying what is inside of the Bible because it's pure and it's correct and then how we use it. So obeying. Sometimes it's hard for us to obey. Sometimes it's hard for me to obey. It's hard. It's not easy. It's not. Against this world, it is not easy. Another point is, is it's impossible to show good fruits if you are not God's people. It's, it's impossible to show good fruits. When we walk into this world and we, and we communicate the gospel with others, they're going to look at you like you're crazy. They're going to look at you like we're wrong. You're not going to see good fruits from them because they don't know. It's impossible for them to show good fruits. They're going to show bad fruits. It's impossible. Because they can't comprehend doing so. They can't comprehend on, on why they're not being good. On why they're not having good actions. On why they're not treating others with, with respect and with love and kindness and hope. Because they don't know. They can't comprehend it. We must bear good fruits. It's important to etch our identity in stone as believers. It's important to take our identity and etch it in stone. Not only for us, because it's not about us. It's not about our loved ones. It's about glorifying God. And it's about doing what He wants us to do. I don't know about you, but I don't want to be unidentified. I don't want to be an unidentified person at the end. I want to be able to go to God and He's going to be like, I knew you. I knew you. I don't want to be un unidentified. It's important for us to, to be identified. To be etched in stone. Russell, can I get you to come up for me? See, the, identify, the identity crisis is, is a sickness that we all have. It's a sickness of being unidentified to God for our actions. Because we don't show the characteristics that we should show. The scariest thing is when the day comes and we don't have an identity. It's scary. Because we shape shifted into this world. We let the world consume us, take us, anything that we ever had worthy inside of us and consumed it into the world. Your thoughts, your heart, your characteristics. I don't know about you, but it would really hurt for God to say He never knew me because my identity was wrong. That's probably one of the scariest things to even think about. Is an identity crisis. And so, I encourage all of you tonight that if you heard some of God's Word tonight and it gave you an identity, 
And it started to, to twist some things. It started to pull at your heart. You can feel a change working inside of you because of God's Word. We can help you with that. We can help you with that. I know sometimes this world is hard. There's a lot of unloving people out there. Well, it's time for us to be a, be a change. Be different. Here in a moment, we're going to have all three of our pastors be up front. We will be up here. We will pray with you. And if you started having a change because of hearing God's Word, I think it's important that you let us go throughout that journey with you. That we guide you. If you don't have a Bible, we have one. We have, we have a lot of them. Yeah. The importance of the Bible is that it's gospel. Is that it's real and that it's important. And it should be an everyday thing in your life. If you need prayer, we are here. We are always here. If it's something that you can't approach any of our pastors, we have staff here on the New Star Church that would love to pray with you, that would love to connect with you. I encourage you, if you have any of these feelings that you're like, I don't want to be unidentified. I want to have an identity. I'm going through a crisis. If you have those feelings, let us know. We are here. <clears throat> We're not going to call you out and be like you are. Hey, you, that person. We wouldn't do that. I promise you. We are here for you. We pray every single week. I take time out of my week to pray for all of you, for all the families of New Star Church. Whether you want to believe it or not, you feel like, yeah, I'm sure about it. That's okay. I take time out of my day to do that because it's important that we pray for each other, that we care for each other, and that we are here. Throughout a year and a half, I haven't seen as much love out of the group of people that I have at this church. Amen. It's important that we continue showing these love and these type of characteristics because we will be unidentified. We went through hard times as families inside this church in a year and a half. We have cried. We have loved. We have prayed. It's important to continue these characteristics. I implore you, I encourage you to continue these characteristics as a church. No matter if I am speaking on a Saturday, Pastor Cameron Gillian is speaking, or Pastor Aaron Walden is speaking, continue these characteristics. Continue to guide people the way God has guided us. That's the important thing. And that we're here together throughout this journey that we call life. And that we don't stop. And that we continue to encourage others the way Jesus encouraged others. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come to You tonight knowing that some of us don't have an identity. Knowing that sometimes we continue to walk apart this life that we're busy and that we don't truly understand what's going on. Father God, we come to You and we encourage You to, to guide us throughout this thing called life. We ask that You be with every single family represented here tonight. All the families watching at home. We ask that You guide us throughout this thing called life. We know this world wants to consume our identity. But we know that Your identity is so much stronger. Father, could You be with us as we go on this journey? But we are not going to go on this alone. I encourage all the families in this church tonight to go on this journey together. To truly guide us. That everything we do is through You. That if we have a question, we go to the Bible and we ask God's Word, Your Word, of how we should do this. Father, we're in awe who You are. 
I ask that you be with these families. Be with these loved ones. This past year and a half, we've lost loved ones. But we know we can rely on you. Through our grieving, through our happiness, through our transgressions, through our busy schedules, you are always there. Father, we come to you with love and honor. And you are all sovereign. In your holy son's name, church say it again. <laughs>
I'm glad that we're getting to help the person that we're getting to help. Amen. I've watched this person pour out the love of God to to people when they don't necessarily even deserve it. Yes. Um, watch this person stick around through a lot of things that quite frankly doesn't have to. Yeah. And so I'm grateful for myself to be able to give back to this person and, and just go show them that we care and we love, we love them. So we're going to do that tomorrow morning at my house, 8.30. If you need directions, you need the address, get with me. I'll get it to you. No problem whatsoever. Um, 8.30, the lunch will be provided. We'll have Gatorades, water, all that good stuff out there so nobody's going to get dehydrated and fall out. I hope not. Um, and there's food, guys. I don't know if y'all heard that. Oh. We're new store. There's food. Y'all show up. 8.30. <laughs> I don't think we're eating at 8.30, but there will be food. I'll go. Food. Once again, food. <laughs> um, speaking of serving, we're going to continue to do this next Saturday as well. Um, we will meet up at my house once again next Saturday and we're going to go out and we have somebody else in the community that we're going to go help and we're excited to be able to reach out and help this person. This person has had some medical issues going on and just really needs some help. Um, there's just things that they can't physically do and so we want to show up and show them that we, we love them, that we're here for them and we're here to serve. And we're going to continue our week of serving. By this Thursday, we're going to have our first outdoor prayer night. And we're going to go out. This is, I don't know if y'all know, but in North Augusta, they do what's called Third Thursday. So all the businesses downtown North Augusta stay open later. People get out, go shopping, all this stuff. And so we're going to be set up right in front of Carpenter's Auto. I don't know if you know where that's at. It's right across the street from Your Pie or Gary's Hamburger on Georgia Avenue. We're going to have a tent set up there so that... We can just reach out to the community. We can share the gospel with them. We can hand out Bibles. We can pray for people and just really get connected. And we can get out of these four walls and go spread the message. And we know in Matthew 28, verse, starting in verse 16, Christ gives us what we call the Great Commission to go to the ends of the earth to spread this gospel that it's, and to make disciples and to teaching them to obey the, all that Christ has commanded us. That it's... It's not just a check mark that we get, like some preachers will tell you, and I'm not ashamed to say it, that there's, there's fruits that we bear, and those fruits will testify to who Christ is and that He's working in our lives. And so we're called to obey Christ's commands to go out and serve and love other people and spread this gospel. So that's what we're going to do, and I'm super excited about it. Speaking of getting connected, if this is your first time here, I'd love to, to hear from you, to know that you are here tonight. We have some connect cards. Am I right about that, Pastor? There's some connect cards yeah, back there. Some. All right, cool. Yeah, there's some connect cards back there. I got to ask. <laughs> there's some connect cards back there on the tithing table. If you fill one of those out, put it in the tithing box right there so we can get it. Also, you can go on newstarna.org and fill out that connect card. Um, that's not just if you're. this is your first time. If you want to get plugged in, if you want to start serving somewhere in, in this ministry, um, we'd love to have you help serve because... This is awesome to see how many people have reached out and are serving in this church and people that a lot of times don't get credit for what they do. I mean, from passing out coffee and, and pamphlets, brochures, notes, to taking pictures and putting them on Facebook, and that's a full-time job, which you do very, very well. Um, I mean, there's all kinds of people. This whole group up here, are, let's give them a round of applause. Yeah. To have this group. We went from a month ago to using this projection screen that honestly needed a lot of WD-40 and a lot of noise. <laughs> <laughs> to, to having this full group up here and oh, another notification. All right. <laughs> and hopefully to watch it grow. And I'm sorry, but I forgot your name already, but I'm going to call you out again. Jacob. 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 All right. I remember, I remember it. Bible. Jacob. I got you. Jacob, I love. All right. <laughs> so I'm excited to hopefully have you come on board with us and play guitar for us and all that. We're excited to see God grow this ministry. Um, but while you're on the website, let's continue to worship and serve God and give Him back what is already His because because it's His anyway. And it's been awesome to see how 
you guys have supported this ministry because honestly we couldn't do this without you. Um, there's no way possible that we could we would be right here today if it weren't for you guys loving God and giving God what is already God. So if you'd like to continue to support this ministry, you can do that one of three ways. You can go online and you can go to newstartna.org and you can give there. You can click on a little tab and get, click the giving tab. Or you can download the Tithely app and you can set up a, a one-time payment or a recurring payment right there on Tithely. Or you can, as Pastor Aaron says, the old-fashioned way. You can put it in an envelope right back there and put your name on it and all uh, we'll get that put in for you. We're just grateful to, to have you guys helping us with this ministry. And speaking of praying for people, like we were talking about, we're going to go out and have this prayer night and, and be praying for the community. You can also put your prayer request in on newstartna.org, and we'd love to pray with you that way. I know I told some of you before that we have a group chat, and if, that's one other thing. Let, let me stop real quick because i got ahead of myself. On the, um, on the Connect cards, not only do we have Connect cards, but a lot of us are in a Facebook group chat that is one of the most unique things <laughs> I've seen the church do and has been awesome. Because this is, for those of y'all that aren't on this group chat, this is the time that we just get together throughout the week constantly. And sometimes it's just people being funny and silly and, and having a good time being brothers and sisters in Christ. And sometimes it's people that have serious needs to come together for prayer and to watch this community of believers come together for each other and love each other and that has been awesome. So if you'd like to be a part of that and get connected and get added into that group chat, we'd love to have you and, and get you plugged in with that. Um, with that being said, it's awesome that we're praying in that group chat for each other, but like I said before, us pastors sometimes with so much going on in that chat don't get to see all the prayer requests that come in, and I don't want to miss an opportunity to be praying for you. So if you would, go on the website and fill out a prayer request card, and so those come directly to us three pastors so that we can be praying for you, we can reach out to you and let you know that we're here for you and we're thinking about you, and you, you're not just falling to the wayside, that somebody loves you, somebody cares for you enough to pray to God for you. So, um, and next week we're going to continue our Elephant in the Room series. And so I'm excited about that. We're just talking about things that are somewhat uncomfortable to talk about. This week was identity. And we know this world deals with an identity crisis. And I pray this week that our identities can be wrapped up in Jesus Christ and in Christ alone. Because He is the one that is good. He's the ultimate sovereign that deserves our, our praise and honor and, and worship. And so we're going to continue to give that to him. So um, I think that's all we got tonight. Is that you got anything else, Pastor? Pastor, you got anything else? No, that's it. Y'all just don't believe me. Well, I got you. I appreciate that. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> so if you will, before we get out of here, we're going to bow our heads and pray. Heavenly Father, we just come to you tonight, and we just thank you for the time that we have to be together, God. That we know that you are working all things for your glory, God, and that we're only here because you've allowed us to be here, God. And, we just thank you for this opportunity. We're not worthy to stand in your presence, God, but we know that your Holy Spirit is moving through this place, that you are present here tonight. And we know that you are, are working all things for your glory, God. And I just, I would pray that we would understand that our salvation is, is not about glorifying ourselves, God, but our salvation is showing how glorious and merciful and gracious that you are, God, and proclaims to the rest of the world that you are the mighty sovereign God. God, I pray that you would work on our hearts and allow us to go serve others, that you would allow us to show that our identity is found in you, God, because Romans 8 says that we can do nothing pleasing to you unless it's by your spirit, God. So I just pray that your spirit would work in our lives and you would allow us to do things that were pleasing to you and to show others that, that we're... We are your people, God, set apart for, for good works because you have saved us, God, and you have given us new life. So, God, I just ask that you would work on our hearts and that you would allow us to go out and boldly proclaim your son, Jesus Christ, and that he has died for our sins. God, we just thank you for what you're doing, and we ask that you continue to be with us this week as we reach out to this community. I pray all these things in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Amen. Y'all remember, we're God's people, so let's go live like it. See y'all next week.